Whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, I'm Tom Gion. This is my part of speech, and this is uh, Tom Wintan. Um, the World Cup held in Brazil uh, last summer proved that soccer is truly a world game. Um, there's been a drastic population uh, popularity growth in uh, the World Cup uh, and soccer in general. The U U.S. final match versus Belgium had 16 million viewers, which was the largest rating ever for an event on ESPN. Uh, it surpassed the NBA final of that year by over half a million. Um, and the nations involved have um, also uh, expanded to what uh, was first mostly just European and American nations to now what are African and Asian nations as well. Um, and while the World Cup was the most viewed sporting event of 2014, many viewers are unaware of its uh, cultured history, its past and current controversies, and its promising future. Uh, so to get into my first point, um, few recognize the significance of the governing bodies which aided uh, and created uh, the, uh, its nations in the early 20th century. Um, in May 28, 1928, the Federation um, Internationale de Football Association, or FIFA for short, um, decided that they wanted to uh, stage a world championship of soccer, which was largely inspired by the uh, popularity of the Olympic soccer games in the early 1900s. Uh, so the first problem was choosing a candidate. Hungary, Italy, the Netherlands, Spain, and Sweden all um, submit their candidatures, but Uruguay was the favorite from the start as it had won gold medals in the Olympic Games in 1924 and 1908, according to uh, the official webpage of FIFA. Um, there were many polemical events, including a uh, European economic crisis. Uh, European clubs did not want to renounce their uh, best players for two months, and the trip to Uruguay, which was the uh, host city, was uh, a month and a half to two month boat trip as planes were not yet uh, commercialized. Um, so the first winner was Uruguay, and since then, in the eight years, only eight different teams have won the World Cup, which is a very interesting fact that I found from uh, Kerry Lisi, who authored a book in 2011. Um, the World Cup has not always experienced a uh, history of ethicality, however, and there's been a significant amount of controversy. Uh, the two significant controversies I want to delve into are the uh, Pablo Escobar controversy. He was a uh, cocaine kingpin in Colombia in the 1970s, as well as the uh, Qatar Kafala system. Um, so the first one is uh, Pablo Escobar used um, the Colombian national team to siphon and uh, launder money uh, that he earned from his cocaine profits. And the way that worked was he would say that uh, he sold 100,000 100, tickets at $5. That, that's how many that were actually sold. He'd say that he sold them at $10. So that extra $5 has now become a legal taxable profit from his cocaine. Um, and therefore, crime, politics, and sports have now collided. Um, I took that from the Two Escobars documentary directed by uh, Zimbalist in 2010. Uh, the other controversy is the uh, Qatar. It's building its World Cup venue in 2022, and it has to build pretty much everything from scratch, and therefore it's importing a lar large amount of migrant work from uh, Southern Eastern Asia, and the way they are, uh, according to the end system uh, docu uh, documentary in 2010, um, as well as the labor rights and the Qatar World Cup article of 2010. Um, there are many human rights implications as in uh, the, uh, the overseers are actually taking the passports of the workers and tearing them up um, and being uh, very abusive in their working hours, promising them fair uh, living wages when in fact they give them uh, very unreasonable hours and small wages. Um, and uh, therefore, the uh, Qatar venue has been somewhat of a controversy in that it's been abusing migrant laborers just trying to find better work for their family. Uh, however, the um, promising future does lie ahead for uh, the World Cup. Um, one of these is uh, the future involves uh, philanthropic goals, uh, hopefully the end of racism and environmental initiatives. Uh, the first in, uh, philanthropic goal I want to uh, delve into is um, the Gold Program. Uh, I took this from FIFA's official website, and uh, its job is to develop uh, projects uh, organized about soccer in developing nations. Um, it's uh, developed 124 in Asia, 143 in Africa, 79 in North uh, America, 29 in uh, South America, 36 in Oceania, and more. Um, so it's really showing that uh, over 200 million USD has gone into funding uh, Products for disadvantaged nations, including artificial and real pitch turfs, uh, headquarters, um, funding for uh, soccer supplies for disadvantaged nations. 
Uh, the second one is the Say No to Racist ca uh, Racism campaign, which has been endorsed by several of uh, the world's top players, including uh, Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, um, obviously aimed at uh, ending racism in the game. And then the third are the environmental initiatives of uh, the World Cup that the FIFA is trying to introduce, including carbon, off carbon offsetting, which uh, McDonald, uh, Jane McDonald, wrote about in her 2014 article about uh, FIFA's environmental green initiatives, as well as building uh, sustainable green stadiums and um, uh, utilizing waste management. Um, so overall, um, I would just like to say that while the World Cup, uh, the World Cup has had a long history that has had both uh, strife and promise, um, it has last left a uh, lasting, lasting legacy um, dedicated to outreach and the promotion of acceptance, even if at times its legacy has been imperfect. Thank <laughs> you.